In the year 2005, we found ourselves in the midst of the World Championship, and although there are still a couple of rounds left, Fernando Alonso has already secured the title by triumphing in Lagos. For most, the championship excitement has dwindled, unless you're employed by Renault or McLaren, as the constructor's title is still up for grabs. Alonso and his team aim to contribute to Renault's success by securing a podium finish, while Juan Pablo Montoya, representing McLaren, faces a setback after a collision with the wall. Despite the less-than-ideal situation for McLaren, they can rely on their other driver, Kimi Raikkonen. Despite starting the race from the 17th position, Raikkonen's performance promises to etch his name as a legendary figure in not just Formula One, but in the broader history of motor racing. Let's take a closer look at Kimi's journey, considering the nature of this video. Kimi Raikkonen, hailing from Porn and Lyria of Finland, began his racing career with karting, mastering the art in the region. Transitioning from karting to car racing, he conquered Formula Ford briefly, but swiftly returned to his karting roots. In 1999, with support from Dave and Steve Robertson, he stepped into Formula Renault in the UK, clinching victory in the Winter Series. The year 2000 marked his participation in Formula Renault UK and the Formula Renault Euro Cup. Although he only raced a few times in the latter, he managed to secure wins at Donington and Spa, ultimately claiming the UK Championship. Looking ahead to 2001, Kimi abandoned junior formula plans and aimed straight for Formula One. After an impressive test session in September 2000, Peter Sauber signed him for the 2001 season alongside Nick Heidfeld. Some questioned Kimi's age on the Formula One grid, but Helmut Marko believed in Enrique Bernoldi's superiority, making the decision to include Kimi a tough sell. Despite concerns, Kimi's talent spoke volumes. Notably, Helmut Marko's task of promoting Bernoldi as the better driver seemed challenging, especially when compared to the straightforward endorsement of Raikkonen, who also happens to be a brand of wireless earbuds, providing premium sound at half the price. Thus, Kimi embarked on his Formula One journey with Sauber in 2001, setting the stage for the remarkable career that followed. Back then, Kimi Raikkonen faced a bit of a challenge trying to join the F1 racing club. Eventually, the F1 commission gave him the green light, and he raced with a temporary license. He teamed up with Heidfeld, and both did well in the first race, even though Kimi was found napping under his motorhome table just before the race. He gained fame for his cool and calm racing style, earning him the nickname The Iceman. Who wouldn't love a racer who just sleeps, races, and repeats? That season turned out okay for Sauber, finishing fourth in the constructor's race. Heidfeld, who secured a podium in Brazil, seemed like the natural choice for McLaren after Hakkinen took a break. However, McLaren surprised everyone by picking Kimi instead. Despite being associated with Ferrari, Kimi reportedly said no because a fortune teller warned him about Austria 2002. Kimi wasn't thrilled about being second in command, so he joined forces with David Coulthard for the 2002 season. Although he scored a podium in Melbourne, the rest of the season wasn't smooth. His car failed him eight times in 17 races, and even when it didn't, fate seemed to conspire against his first Grand Prix win, like in France. Despite the challenges, Kimi's journey in F1 continued with its ups and downs. In 2003, things were a bit better for McLaren, except for the trouble with the MP418 car that designer Adrian Newey really wanted on the track. The drivers didn't like it because it kept crashing during testing. However, the car they did use performed well, helping Kimi Raikkonen win his first Grand Prix in Malaysia. Although he didn't win more races, Kimi had a chance to win the championship at the last race in Japan, starting from 8th place on the grid. His main rival, Michael Schumacher, started 14th, giving Kimi some hope. Despite a good effort, Rubens Barrichello won the race, preventing Kimi from earning enough points to take the title. Even if Kimi had won, Schumacher's 8th place finish would have secured the championship. Kimi faced challenges throughout the season, like an engine failure at the Nürburgring and disputes with Ferrari about McLaren's tires. In 2004, McLaren struggled to provide a competitive car, and Kimi's chances for the title were slim. The car was slow and unreliable, but some improvements helped him secure a win in Spa. The following year, 2005 brought a change in fortunes with the MP420 car. While incredibly fast, it had reliability issues, stopping Kimi from achieving consistent success. That year had a lot of problems with cars breaking down, and it affected how well the races went. Kimi won 7 out of the 19 races, showing he was really fast. He even beat Alonso by half a second in Monaco, and did great at Suzuka too. But there were issues, 
Some say fate played a part. Kimi was one of the best drivers at that time. Even with tough competition from Michael Schumacher and others, they fixed the car problems, but then the car itself wasn't great. If both Kimi and Montoya can't make it work, it's not just the driver's fault. Montoya left in the middle of the year, and Kimi got podiums and pole positions, but no wins. Schumacher retired, and Ferrari asked Kimi to join in 2007. Some thought it was a silly move with McLaren having a strong year. The car was better, but you know what happened. In the first race, Kimi did amazing. Pole position, fastest lap, and he won. But he struggled with new tires, and by the seventh race, he was 26 points behind Hamilton. Then he won at Monaco and Silverstone, reducing the gap to 18 points. It seemed tough, but not impossible to win the championship. He didn't finish the boat race at the Nürburgring, but after that, he did really well in every other race that season. It helped him a lot in the championship. Even if Lewis had already won, there was no way he would lose a 12-point lead with two rounds left. Or so everyone thought until he realized that the tires didn't have much grip. In the final round in Interlagos that year, Lewis was only seven points ahead of Kimi. It seemed unlikely, but you never know what might happen. And what happened was that Lewis had some problems with his gearbox early in the race. This made him fall back in the race, and he ended up finishing in seventh place. Kimi, on the other hand, managed to win, with his teammate Felipe Massa helping him out. So what did this mean? Well, you probably guessed it. Kimi Raikkonen became the world champion by just one point. It was a bit closer than he would have wanted, but he was still the world champion, and he definitely deserved it. This added to Finland's list of world champions, including Keki Rosberg, Tommy Makinen, Juha Kunkkonen, Mika Hakkinen, Marcus Granholm, and now Kimi Raikkonen. What's really interesting is that even though this was a long-awaited championship win for him, it turned out to be the only time he would win a title. In 2008, his title defense didn't go well. After leading the championship early on, he started to struggle as the year went on. Some bad luck and mistakes, like an exhaust failure and a collision with Lewis in Montreal, contributed to his third-place finish that year behind his teammate. In 2009, Ferrari bought a car that Kimi and Felipe had trouble with at first, but when the car got better, so did their results. Some people, like Martin Brundle, thought Kimi might not be as interested in Formula One anymore. When Ferrari said Alonso would drive for them in 2010 instead of Kimi, people wondered what Kimi would do next. Instead of going to McLaren, Mercedes, or Stefan Grand Prix, Kimi decided to try something new, rally racing. He also tried NASCAR for a short time but didn't do well. In rally racing, he did a bit better, getting some decent results after a couple of years. Maybe because he was used to winning in Formula One, he felt tempted to go back. People got excited when they saw Kimi at the Williams team's place. They thought he might return to Formula One with them, but he ended up signing with Lotus instead. This was ironic because he had criticized Lotus before when they didn't sign him in 2010. In 2012, Kimi returned to Formula One with Lotus, partnering with Romain Grosjean. That year, he showed he still had what it takes, especially in the Abu Dhabi race. Fans loved his no-nonsense attitude, his calmness, and how he avoided interviews or gave straightforward answers. They wondered what had changed about him. In recent years, people have mostly talked about Kimi for reasons other than his on-track performance, which is the main focus here. Despite finishing in third place in the F1 standings in 2012 and starting 2013 impressively by winning the Melbourne race, Kimi faced challenges within his team, Lotus. His contract included an unusual clause where he would be paid 50,000 euros for every point he scored over two years. With 390 points, that amounted to a hefty 19.5 million euros, but there were rumors that he wasn't actually getting paid. Internal issues escalated, with verbal clashes and the threat of Finland declaring war on Western Europe if he had to yield to Grosjean. The team tension reached a point where Kimi almost skipped the Abu Dhabi race, and when he retired during the race, he left abruptly, citing back surgery as the reason for missing the last two rounds. After leaving Lotus, Kimi joined Ferrari, replacing Felipe Massa. The pairing of Fernando Alonso and Kimi at Ferrari aimed to recreate past success, but the team faced challenges with a poorly performing Formula One car. Despite Alonso's efforts, neither driver achieved significant success, with Kimi failing to secure a podium due to struggles with the car's brake-by-wire system and overall poor performance. When Sebastian Vettel joined the team in 2015, things didn't become much easier for Kimi. Over the four years they were teammates, it was clear that Vettel had the upper hand. Kimi did have some good moments, like his impressive performance at Monza and a win in Austin in 2018. However, it wasn't sufficient. In 2019, 
Ferrari brought in Charles Leclerc, and Kimi returned to his former team, now called Alfa Romeo. The team couldn't provide him with a competitive car, signaling the beginning of the end. Despite some remarkable performances, Kimi found himself battling for lower positions on the grid. The inevitable happened in 2021 when he announced his retirement from Formula One. As we approach his final race, let's reflect on Kimi's contributions to the sport. The recent years might not capture the fun side of Kimi. His humorous radio messages, references to his ice cream love, ability to find a drink outside the car, and stories like the 2006 Monaco incident, where he casually went to his yacht after a race mishap, highlight his carefree and meme-worthy persona. Despite the media focus on these aspects, it's important to remember that Prime Kimi Raikkonen was an unbeatable force. One of the best examples of this incredible racing moment is Suzuka 2005. The race started with a bit of chaos due to rain during qualifying and an engine issue. Juan Pablo Montoya, driving for McLaren, began the race from the 17th position on the grid. The main goal was to score points for McLaren in the constructors' title race. However, Montoya didn't seem bothered by this and ended up crashing his car into the barrier. On the other hand, Kimi Raikkonen, his teammate, was making a remarkable comeback, passing other cars and moving up the order. As the race progressed, Raikkonen found himself in the lead, but had to make a final pit stop with 10 laps to go. Giancarlo Fisichella took the lead at that point. Raikkonen faced the challenge of catching up, and with three laps remaining, he was right behind Fisichella. Passing on the Suzuka circuit is not easy, but Raikkonen seized the opportunity when Fisichella left a small opening. On the last lap, approaching turn one, Raikkonen went for an audacious move around the outside and succeeded. Going from 17th on the grid to winning the race with a daring maneuver epitomized Raikkonen's driving style incredibly fast. This performance, showcasing his raw speed, solidified his reputation as a great driver. Many consider prime Kimi Raikkonen as the best driver in the world. While we'll miss Kimi's unique personality, it's these heroic moments from his pursuit of championships that I'll remember and cherish. Thanks for watching. Feel free to comment, subscribe. See you later.